Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Today we are doing a retro CPU review of the AMD Phenom X4 9950 Black Edition up against the Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600. So let's get into that. So why on earth am I reviewing these two CPUs in 2019 when the Core 2 was released in 2007 and the Phenom was released in 2008? Well, fantastic question. To answer your question, it's because I want to. That's it. Um, because I want to, because you guys will probably watch it, because you guys seem to take a liking to um, me reviewing older parts. Um, so it's purely about a curiosity factor. I'm sure you can go and look up benchmarks of these guys historically, but you won't have modern titles in those benchmarks, which is what I do have. Uh, so, um, to give you some background on these CPUs, because some of you watching this video might actually not have been alive when these CPU launches, CPUs launched, which makes me feel old, but anyway, whatever. Um, so these CPUs came out when I was still a teenager. I was still in high school, so I'm not that freaking old. Um, but I do remember when these CPUs came out, the uh, Core 2 Quad Q6600, it came out and it conquered absolutely everything on the market. Nothing had an answer to it. AMD had no response. They had no rebuttal. Uh, the, the Core 2 Duos were beating the Athlon X, uh, 64 X2s at the time, um, and AMD, everyone's waiting on AMD's response when the Core 2 Quads came out because they had to do something, otherwise they were dead and buried. Um, and that is where the Phenom chip came in. So the Phenom came out, um, people were hoping that it would come along and just smack Intel off and then Intel would come back at them. That didn't happen as you guys know from history. Unfortunately, the Phenom came out. It wasn't as good as the Core 2 Duos clock for clock. Uh, sorry, the Core 2 Quads or the Core 2 Duos clock for clock. Um, on single core, the Core 2 Quads versus the X4s, the Core 2 Quads won. Um, but uh, the reason why this review is relevant is because at the time, the 9950 was uh, relatively around the same performance point as the Q6600. There were some slight differences. Um, the 9950 seemed to be very, very well optimized for multi-core, as in uh, it, it had proper scaling across the single core. You know, you could basically take the single core scores and then multiply them by four, give or take. It's not going to be a perfect uh, quadrupling, um, but it scaled very well compared to a single core performance. Core 2 quad, not so much. Um, that was because uh, Intel used a design that they're currently criticizing Ryzen, uh, sorry, AMD for, which was gluing two CPU dies together. Um, that sounds oddly familiar, like a Ryzen CPU, but um, anyway, we won't glaze over the fact that in, um, uh, Intel is having a go at AMD currently for that, even though they did it 13 years ago. Um, so yes, Core 2 Quad was glued together. Um, that didn't affect performance adversely. Uh, it certainly wasn't as well optimized as say a Core i series, which is actually all CPU dies natively on one die. Um, it had its limitations, but the thing was, the performance was so damn close, um, it, it didn't matter. So um, yeah, that, that was the deal back then. The, the Core 2 series was just unstoppable in single core, but uh, AMD optimized their, at the time, native uh, quad core design, which they were very proud of. I remember that was their big marketing point with their Phenom series was, unlike the Intel competitor, we have a native Phenom blah blah quad core design. It was like, cool, great, so why are your benchmarks worse than Intel's? You know. Um, but yeah, that's the story behind the story. Now, the modern benchmark that we're doing today, uh, that is going to be consisted around um, seven games and a Cinebench run. So, keeping the test short, um, but we're also going to be running the CPUs in their stock and overclock states. Now, for the AMD Phenom, its stock clock is 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, overclocked, it is up to 3.2 slash 3.1, depending on the game, because the 3.2 was not 100% stable. Um, not a fault of the CPU, it was actually a fault of the motherboard. Um, if I did have a, a, a proper high-end motherboard for that CPU from the time, uh, I probably would have been able to get more like 3.4, 3.5. I, I have read some forum posts where people were getting that on the high-end boards back then. Um, but the difference between that and 3.2 is probably negligible. Um, 
but yeah, that, that, that was the most I could get out of the Phenom CPU. And by contrast, uh, the Core 2 Quad, the six, Q6600, uh, stock clock 2.4, overclocked to 3.24. Um, reason behind this was purely because um, 3.24, it wasn't the maximum on the board. It's because most motherboards I've tested the Q6600 on, it caps out at about 3.2. Um, it's purely a limitation of most motherboards, um, unless you have the real top end boards, which luckily I do now have a 775 top end board. Um, if you don't have that, then you're not gonna get the maximum amount of the CPU. 3.2 is about your cap, so that's why I've gone with 3.2 overclock. Um, so yeah, that's the story behind the story. Oh, uh, very important, I forgot to mention, the GPU we are pairing them with, uh, they're being paired with a um, GeForce GTX 1050, 2GB, non-TI. Uh, reason for that is because it's reasonably fair pairing with these CPUs. I can imagine they're probably going to bottleneck even the 1050. Um, maybe in some titles they don't, which you guys will find out with the benchmarks. Um, and uh, on the RAM side we had 8GB of DDR2, exact same RAM, DIMMs for both setups. Um, it worked flawlessly, so let's jump into those benchmarks. Okay, first up was CSGO. Uh, we were at 1080p on low settings. Uh, now, on the Intel Core 2 Quad being the top of the list, um, that's where I expected it to be. That's why I put it at the top of the list, because it makes sense when you look at a graph and it scales down like that. Uh, we had a score of uh, 77 average, average frames per second, 46 and 37 as a 1% and 0.1% lows. And you can see it sort of scales down the graph. The Phenom 9950 in its overclock state is just behind it. And then as we drop down the stock clocks, just behind it again. Not a whole lot, but in a in a benchmark in a real world, you notice the slight difference. Um, when I was actually doing the benchmarks, I couldn't, if you put the two systems side by side, I couldn't tell you the difference because there was no real stuttering or jittering with CSGO. It ran the game smoothly on both platforms. Um, and realistically, I think the difference in the performance here comes down to that single core performance that the Core 2 uh, series had over the Phenom series. And you will see that coming through the following benchmarks. So next up was Borderlands 2. And this is where we had a GPU bottleneck. Now, uh, 44, 44, 34, 43. Don't understand why the Core 2 was so low. Um, I was in the same area benchmarking the same run, doing the same things, and I did it multiple times to try and make sure it was roughly the same. For whatever reason, it wasn't, um, but I would strongly suggest that this was actually a GPU bound benchmark, which I didn't think would be the case. Um, it was Borderlands 2, 1080p Ultra, but I'd assumed, given being a really old game, the 1050 would wouldn't bottleneck it, um, but unfortunately it was a bottleneck, so we're going to have to skip over this. I'm sorry, guys. So, uh, next game was Fallout New Vegas. Um, again, it's going to be a bottleneck. Um, I had this on Ultra 1080p. It's purely in there for historical purposes because this is a game that is... It's actually a little bit newer than when these CPUs were released, but these CPUs were getting benchmarked on this game at some point in their life. Um, so, as you can see here, there is a frame cap on this engine of 60 frames per second. Um, 54, 58, 53, and 55. So, the Phenom actually starts to take a little bit of a lead, and I think that is probably because it's just a little bit better at multi-core. Um, versus the Core 2. So, next up we had GTA 5. I, I hesitate to call this a modern game because it's really not. It's about five years old now. It's getting pretty old. Um, but it's still relevant. A lot of people still play it. Um, and we saw, again, that multi-core advantage of the Phenom. Uh, it beat the Core 2 Quad. It was 44 versus 41. Tell me if you can tell that difference in the real world. I'm not going to be able to tell you. Um, and then at stock settings, 36 versus 38. So, Slightly ahead, but you know, within error margins, um, come on, realistically, you're not gonna notice that difference. So, practically the same. Um, next up was Dirt Rally, uh, and we get much more muchness again. Um, 66 versus 66, and 52 versus 54, with the Phenom edging it out. Um, but again, pretty much the same CPU. Uh, next was Fortnite. Now, if you are looking at this graph, I want you to pay very, very close attention to what I am saying. Fortnite is a horrible game to benchmark because this is the averages of multiple runs. The variance I was getting from run to run, the, uh, I'll give you an example. The, the last run I did for the Core 2 Quad, the first time I did it, it was getting 110 FPS. 
please explain that to me. I don't understand how it can go from uh, 42 frames per second to 110 frames per second with what? Uh, less than a 1 gigahertz overclock and 800 megahertz overclock. I don't see that. It then, the next run was 60. Again, please explain that to me. I don't understand it. Um, so I basically just had to do multiple runs uh, and I just had to average it out. Um, so these are the average results. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, Fortnite, I don't trust it as a benchmark. I purely use it because I would get mob lynched if I didn't include it um, because a lot of people still play the game. So um, uh, the way I would look at these graphs is can the Phenomen, can the Core 2 Quad run Fortnite? Um, at stock settings, no. At overclock settings, yes. Um, it was a stuttery mess on stock settings. Even when overclocked, it was a little stuttery, but it ran okay. Um, it was playable. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's kind of my spiel and, and rant about Fortnite, but I will keep including it because you guys will mob lynch me if I don't. So that's why it's in there. Uh, la second last gaming benchmark, actually, you guys get a bonus spent, uh, game. I forgot about Battlefield 5. Uh, so Fallout 76, um, very modern title. 36 versus 38, 34 versus 31. Again, we're switching back and forward. We're in error margins. The Phenom seems to be slightly ahead, but the Core 2 seems slightly ahead at stock settings. So I'd say we're within error margins. Um, and the game was a little bit of a stuttery, jittery mess, um, but Fallout 76 is by default a bit of a stuttery, jittery mess. Um, but compared to, say, if I jumped from my Ryzen 7 system back to these Core 2s, I could tell a very big difference between... Um, the feel of these games, but it does run it, which is pretty cool. I was, I was pretty amazed that it ran Fallout 76 because, uh, yeah, 76 kind of broke the potato PC in a previous video. Um, anyway, we'll glaze over that. We'll move on. Uh, last title is Battlefield 5, and this is where I'm going to get into my rant of why these CPUs are no longer relevant as gaming CPUs. Uh, so, Core 2 Quad 27 ahead of Phenom 25, not overclocked 21 versus 22, um, but Remember, I benchmark these games in, uh, it's on the 1080p low, so it's on the lowest possible settings. If anyone tries to tell me that put it to ultra and it'll solve the problem, it won't. I'm telling you, it won't. Um, it's just not capable of running this game in 1080p. Maybe if you dropped it to 720, maybe, but I don't picture that happening. Um, so this title was a bit of a stuttery mess, and overall... <sighs> if you're playing Battlefield 5 with these CPUs, it's because you literally have no other option to play Battlefield 5. So, yeah, bit of a disappointment, um, but all in all, that was it. And last benchmark is Cinebench R15, the great decider. Uh, now, 320 for the Core 2 Quad, Q6600 versus 288 on the Phenom at 3.2. Core 2 Quad edges out Phenom in overclocked. At stock settings, flicks back the other way. Uh, Q6600, 230 versus 246. So, again... Within error margins, it looks like a difference, but when you realistically average it out, it's not a big difference. Um, you should not be using these for production workloads. They should should be not should not be getting used in Premiere and things like that. So um, that's the story behind the benchmarks. Uh, I didn't include as many as I normally do purely because I don't want this to be a massively long video. Um, but, uh, I guess conclusion points for you guys, I'm just going to roll straight into this because I feel like I've kind of done the conclusion throughout the whole video. Difference between these CPUs, does it exist 13 years after um, one of them was originally launched and 12 years after the other one was launched? The difference, realistically, I couldn't tell you the difference between the two platforms. Um, they were pretty much identical uh, in terms of like PCI support, in terms of SATA support, in terms of USB support. RAM support, it's all pretty much much of a muchness. So if you had to choose between the two, I'm gonna say the only way that you could choose between the two is basically on price. And unfortunately for AMD, I'm gonna to have to say that the Core 2 Quad Q6600 is gonna edge it out on price. The reason for that is because uh, AMD owners seem to think that their CPUs are worth more than they are. So whenever I go looking for these AMD CPUs, they're generally not cheap. Um, people are trying to sell them for, you know, 50, 100 bucks when realistically, 
you can get the Intel equivalent for like 20 bucks. Um, that's not a reflection on AMD or, or their processor. This is a reflection of how silly people can get with the used market. Um, and they, they will refuse to sell it at the price that it's worth. They will hold on until someone buys it off them at that full $100, $50, whatever ridiculous price they're asking. So, um, yeah, that's my conclusion. Probably, realistically, you're going to be buying the Q6600 uh, purely because there was more of them, there's more parts for them, they're cheaper. But hey, if you get a killer deal on the Phenom, go for it. It's a still a brilliant CPU. Um, it, it, it really surprised me, and the Q6600 really surprised me as well because it's really let me down in a lot of recent benchmark runs I've done, and that's maybe because I've been using really modern titles. Um, but yeah, both of these CPUs are very viable for a really low-end budget build if you're just trying to get something you know you've got like a hundred two hundred bucks you need a pc they're a viable option so um that's my review thanks for watching guys leave a like if you liked it leave a dislike if you disliked it comments down below if you have any questions or you want to you know maybe rebuttal me say hey the phenom was better or hey the core 2 is better don't mind um open to negotiations open to talk uh and Get subscribed because I'm getting very close to my goal of hitting a thousand subscribers. Um, we're at about 950 at the moment. That's really exciting for me. Um, I will probably be doing a giveaway of, of some sort when I hit a thousand subscribers. I haven't quite worked out what I want to do with it, um, but I will be doing something to celebrate a thousand subscribers. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of news, but I think I will leave that for a dedicated subscriber video. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.